uh, in the last uh, th three months, I've had discussions with, um, I've written letters to, what's his name, Baird, before he yeah, resigned. Yeah. Baird wrote back to me as Gila leader of the Uwalia Nation. His Secretary of Parliament, the Parliamentary Secretary, wrote to me as Gila of the Lead Uwalia Nation. And the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs in New South Wales wrote to me as Gila leader of the Uwalia Nation. And they now want to deal with the issues that we put to them and said, you've got no authority in our country now. And in one of the letters that we sent to the Queen and to the Governor of New South Wales, we want all your police out of our state by the end of 2017. All your police. We will be taken over your courts and we will exercise authority under our law and culture. And so now the Premier's written to me. Now he's jumped out of the boat. Yeah. And he's left it to this oh, other poor. This, this, <laughs> he, yeah. So he's left it to this other poor woman now, who's got a, and, and the minister and her staff. The governor, the governor of New South Wales, what's his name? That um, um, I should know his name. He's soldier, probably. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, but two weeks before, three weeks before Christmas, he asked me to come to Government House in Canberra, uh, in S Sydney, sorry. And so I went and had a meeting with him, and he said, "Oh, he said." Um, he said, oh, I, I, I had a meeting with the Executive Council of State this morning and told them that I was meeting with you. And he said, I was just warned, watch that folly, you know, you can twist you. Um, so he said, I got a warning about you. Ah. He said, but I told them I'm meeting you anyway because I have an obligation, right? Because the obligation was now established by Queen Elizabeth II, his boss, right? And so he said, where do we start? I said, the first place you start is help me bury my dead. That's the first place I want you to start, where the massacre occurred. And I want you, as the governor, to get the parliament to read onto their parliamentary records that you killed our people, that, they, that you knew about it, that you failed to do a coronial inquiry into the massacre of the people, and that no one's ever buried them. Their bones are still laying there. And so he's now working with the military of Australia over here, uh, the, what do you call it, the War Memorial, and what he's going to do is use what they used over in um, from in France, where they had to find the human remains, right? So they're going to use those things because they to pick up human remains as opposed to animal remains, yeah. And they scan the scan the area where you say the you say the human remains are. So what we're going to do is we're going to he, he's now organising with the War Memorial here to now go and excavate uh, do that area look at where the area is, pick up the animal bones, separate them, and we're going to have a proper ceremony. But we won't do that until the New South Wales Parliament accepts what they've done and what happened. Now, what I haven't told him, and I'll tell you, is that what is that, that there massacre, they benefited, the Crown of England benefited from a proceed of a crime. And they can, nobody is able to pro benefit and profit from a profit, proceeds of a crime. And murder, there is no time limit on murder. And what happened there is murder. And so now we're going after them because, that, because he's a military man, he understands the need to bury the dead. He understands that. And, and so what we're going to do, and we're, we're going through that pathway. Now, in the meantime, We've defined all our territory, yeah? And now, white people out there, because we've defined our territory, we put in a native title claim and then we pulled it out. We did it simply because the people said, we want them bastards to recognize who we are. So we put the native title claim in, then we, we mapped the area, they registered in the federal court, then when the court said, oh, we want evidence, they paid for all the genealogical connections, they paid for all the historical report. As soon as they completed all that, we pulled the native title claim out and said, see you later, Jack. That's our country. You just recognised us. Thank you very much. We've defined everything, so we've now got, got now we're working on that level. Now, because we pulled it out and we, we discontinued it, it's still sitting on the records. <coughs> and as a consequence of that, that action, it's now registered on every, every property within our defined area that there's a native title that's been discontinued so no white fuller out there now can buy any buy any buyers for the land no one's buying the land anymore they've got properties up there for sale they want to get out right 
and they're trying to sell the land, but they can't because that's registered on the title deeds now that there is a discontinued native title claim. And all of that land out there is Western land leases, yeah, and that's what's killing them. And so they can't sell the land now because the land has been devalued. Just recently, a white fellow over mining, white farmer, he lost his case over prospectors coming into on his land, yes. right? And so when he lost that case, as soon as he lost that case, the government, all the property owners started putting up their sale and said to the government, will you buy the bloody land from us? You buy it. So what's happened is the New South Wales government have bought two properties. We're doing a different, we're taking different steps, but we're all heading in the one direction to become self-determining. Tell the whites to fuck off. You've got no jurisdiction on our country anymore. We're a sovereign people, we're a sovereign race, We've t being right, we have the right to self-determination and what we said yesterday and what we read up here, the Australian government have got no authority over us exercising our rights. And we have to understand how to press those buttons, how to take that initiative and keep the bastards out of our place. And we're, we're being successful in, in these steps like with the, with the Tri-Nation mob now up in Cairns they're right on the, they're, they're developing their business. I've got Fijians out on there right now who are on this country. What we've done is that we've given them, we've given them sanctuary and they're building a, a market garden for our whole communities, for all our communities around, Aboriginal communities. They're building market gardens. They don't have a right to be in Australia, but now they're on our country. No police is allowed on our country. And we've tested that at Brewarrina. Where, where, the, where Barwon 4 is, they call it the Aboriginal Reserve, it's on ULEO land on the, on the northern side. We put a sign up there at the gate two year, about 18 months ago, put a sign up there, no unauthorised persons allowed, this includes police and government agencies. Wow. Yeah? And it's signed by, and it's got by the, uh, by the community elders, it's got authorised by the, by the ULEO um, Executive Council of State and, El and most senior council of elders, and the elders of Barwon 4. Right, and so we got names down the bottom where they can ring up and say if you want to come. When we put that up, all the police now and the government authorities they ring up before they go on there, and the police are, have been instructed that they are not permitted to go onto that land or across that grid to go into that community. Right, and so no police goes in there. The New South Wales Police Department have been ringing the Brewarrina people up and ringing me up and they say, we want to meet with you because we need to take that sign down. We said, up you Jack, we're not meeting with you at all. You know, that sign, sign stays where it is. The good thing about that is that we said to the people when we had, when we had the community meeting, if someone mucks up on here, you've got to take responsibility. And one of the beauties is that the young fellows have stepped up and said, we get old people on here, we get young kids on here, you mess up here, we'll throw you out. Yeah. So the young ones have stepped up, <coughs> they've had parties there, and the young ones, soon as they start, before they start their parties, these blokes go to the house and say, you make loud noise, we're gonna throw you out of here. Yeah. And then they tell the young fellas in the community, you go over there and break the law in town, and you come back here and the policeman chasing you, we're going to throw you out that gate there, look, and we're going to throw you to him. <laughs> right? And they can have you. You do not use this place as a place of ha a safe haven for your crimes that you commit out there. If you, yeah, because you belong to us, you're our family. Now, the people are very happy now that they're moving in this direction, and the thing is that we're moving other people, we brought people in to help them lower their electricity rates. We've done that with people, we brought them in, when we brought these electricians in, who came there for nothing, worked with the community, turned down all the hot water systems, reconstructed, they reconfigured their air conditionings in their houses for nothing, did all the relight bulbs and got all them, all the Osram donated everything yeah, for nothing, yeah. did all that there. Their electricity dropped by 60% wow, in that community. And so we're working because we've got to help our people in the community while we fight this political yeah, struggle yeah, as well. Yeah. Land rights legislation before made it total. The only way we're going to get our land is to occupy it and defend it. That's right. That's right.